Kia ora, it's Grant Whitbourne here and today I want to talk about an issue that I'm seeing. I want to talk about a problem that I'm seeing in people that are starting to learn te reo Māori and <clears throat> really fundamentally comes down to what they're trying to learn at the very start of the journey and how that really can inhibit the rest of the journey and how they progress on that journey into learning te reo Māori. So when people often get started, they think, All right, I'm going to start with the basics. The basics is where I need to start. So what are the basics? And for some reason, we automatically, we go straight back to the basics of a child. We go straight back to colors. We go straight back to numbers, shapes, and animals. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with learning these things. Yes, they are full of words, uh, words that will progress your vocabulary, fill your, fill your kit there of new words, <clears throat> and you'll be able to learn all these new wonderful things. Now, the problem is, there's a difference between how a child learns those things and how an adult learns those things. And what I believe that is, is when a child is learning colors, when a child is learning shapes, when a child is learning the color blue, they're not just learning the color blue. You see, as a baby, they've got an empty mind. They've got a blank canvas and they've got all this stuff in the world that they need to learn. So when they're learning the color blue, they're not just learning the word blue. They're learning how blue sits within the context of the world. They're learning that the sky is blue, that the ocean is blue, <clears throat> that that car over there is blue. When they're learning shapes, they're learning not just the word round or a circle. They're learning that a ball is round. They're learning that the moon is round, that the earth is round. They're learning that the, the wheel on the car is round. <clears throat> and from that, round things actually roll. So when we're learning these things, or when children are learning, learning these really basic words, they're learning them not only just as words themselves, but within the context of the world. Now, why is this a problem <clears throat> for you as a new learner, or for anyone as a new learner in Te Reo Māori? You already know how those words fit within the world. You already know what blue is. You know that there's different shades of blue. You know that the sky is blue, that the ocean is blue, that that car's over there is blue. You know that the wheel is round, that the ball is round, that the moon is round, all those sorts of things. So for you, there's not a lot of sense in learning that word because you already know fundamentally what that word means. Whereas a child, they don't. They're still learning all these things. They're still learning how the world works, how colors work in the world, how shapes work in the world, how animals work in the world, how people work in the world. Whereas we as adults, <clears throat> we know all those things already. So we're really stuck trying to learn a word on its own and we don't need to learn any more context behind it. And we're only really talking about these basic words here, colors, shapes, numbers even, uh, vehicles, all those sorts of things. So for an adult, you really need to be learning something that you can put within the, the context of your own life, something that you can contextualize within your own life, just as a child does with those uh, really basic words. <clears throat> we, as adults, need to do the same thing because if we can give context, if we can give purpose and we can give meaning to the words that we're saying, then they're much more likely to stick up here. They're much more likely to be retained. Now, this is something that I've taught in my boot camps uh, since we started them, <clears throat> and that is repetition. Repetition of words and high frequency. So when I talk about repetition, I don't mean just learning the word blue and saying it over and over and over and over again, because you, you don't have the, the it's, it's not a practical word in most people's lives. They don't use blue a lot. When I talk about repetition and I talk about frequency, I'm talking about taking those words, taking those sayings that you're already using in a really high frequency in your day-to-day -day life, <clears throat> converting them into te reo Māori and starting from there as a base. Now, there's a principle in life called the 80-20 principle and it can be applied to language. And the 80-20 principle basically revolves around 80% of what we get in life comes from about 20% of what we do. Uh, in business, you know, 80% uh, of the results usually come from, say, 20% of the products. In sport, rugby, 80% of the points will come from 20% of the players. 
in language, 80% of the total amount of words that we speak are usually made up of 20% of our language. So we really only need to focus on that that 20% uh, of those high frequency words. And we should, in theory, be able to get somewhere around the 80% of what we're saying uh, in real life. So for instance, uh, imagine you're working at McDonald's. Imagine a McDonald's worker. Every single day they're saying, hello, what would you like? Hello, um, what can I get you? Something along those lines. Now, they're saying that phrase two, three, four, five hundred times a day. If they go and learn how to say that phrase and they can continue to say it, then it's much more likely to stick because they've got context around that phrase. They have a purpose behind saying it. They have to say it in order to you know, fulfill the role of their job. Whereas if they go out and learn the word blue, when are they going to use blue? When are they ever going to use blue? They won't unless they've really got to try and use it. And by forcing yourself to use those words, that doesn't really become a natural state of language. And at the end of the day, that's what language is. Language is natural. We're just talking. We're just communicating with other people. So what I really encourage people to do is go and find those high-frequency words, and they're always they're different for everyone. They're different from the girl at McDonald's. They're different from the postal worker. They're different from the stay-at-home mum, the stay-at-home dad, the fly and fly out worker, <clears throat> the high rolling executive, everyone has a different set of language that they use. Different sets of high frequency words and different sets of high frequency phrases. So, now you've got this far in the video. At the start of the video, I did say that I was going to give you uh, a challenge, uh, give you uh, some tips that you can take away to really reinforce this. So, what I encourage you to do is tomorrow, from tomorrow morning, don't forget, tomorrow morning, Take out a pen, take out a paper, take out your note taker in your phone, whatever it is. And throughout the day, I really want you to focus on what you're saying. And as you go through the day, I want you to really focus on uh, any high frequency words, high frequency phrases that you're saying, and I want you to take note of them. Write them down on your phone, write them down in a notebook, whatever's easy, type them up on a computer. And as you get towards the end of the day, I want you to have a list a list of all the high frequency words and phrases that you're saying in English. Okay, we're not talking about today all yet. See, the goal of this is really to identify for you personally, because you're going to be different to everyone else, identify what those high frequency words and those high frequency phrases are. Now, that's the first step. I want you to cull that down if you can. <clears throat> cull it down to 10 and focus on the top 10 things that you're saying every single day. Next step. Go away and find the translation. I don't mean go away, literally go away. I mean, take those words away and find the translations for them. Ask people if you have to. Look up the translations on modidictionary.co.nz. Uh, ask in Facebook groups. Maybe don't message me because I get lots of different messages uh, and I may not be able to get back to you straight away. Um, ask Fano, ask friends. Just try and come up with the translations for those words. Then your next goal... Your next step, your next action item is to take all those words, take those phrases and start putting them into your daily routine, starting at the highest frequency one. If your highest frequency word is yelling at the kids because you're at home with them all day and you're always telling them stop that or don't do that, start with that. Don't be like that. Don't do that. There's your first one if you're a stay-at-home mom. If you're yelling at the kids, that's probably the first one. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, if you've got any others, go away, try and find the translations for them and start implementing them on day two. So tomorrow, tomorrow morning, you're starting with your list. That's your first step. Cull it down to 10. Get your translations on day two. Get all those worked out. Don't muck around with it. Then day three, bang, get into action. Start implementing them as, <clears throat> as quickly as you can. Write them out if you have to. Put them up on the wall. Uh, put stickers up around the house, reminders, all those sorts of things. Alarms on your phone, whatever you've got to do. You really need to take action with this and uh, really start moving with it. Because if you don't, then it's never going to happen. So that's my tip for today. That's my uh, that's my my view on one of the biggest mistakes that people are making these days. And there's my little action tip for how you can rectify it. So thanks for checking out today's video. If you haven't already, do please hit the subscribe button bit down below. Subscribe button down below, uh, so we can stay in touch, so you can keep up to date with all the new videos that come out. And please let me know all those words down in the comments section. I may not translate them for you, but I would love to hear what all those words are and what those high frequency words and phrases are 
viel.